Hello, welcome to the Mark Janot Show, the cybersecurity show. So the increase in the Linux desktop market share uh, in recent years is driven by, you know, dissatisfaction with Windows. Many users are increasingly dissatisfied with recent changes in Windows, such as the push for cloud subscriptions. That's the Windows 365, the aggressive advertising and privacy concerns. So Microsoft's focus has shifted toward the cloud and subscription services, right? So that basically makes traditional Windows desktop less of a priority. We have the end of the Windows 10 support. The upcoming end of life for Windows 10 in October 2025 is prompting users to seek alternatives, especially since Windows 11 imposes stricter hardware requirements that many existing PCs do not meet. So this has made Linux an attractive option for users wishing to extend the life of their hardware, right? Linux has improved its usability. So, you know, modern Linux distributions have become much easier to install and use, you know, with more user-friendly interfaces and streamlined software installation processes. So the, you know, this reduction in complexity has lowered the barrier for new users, right? And then, you know, Linux gaming has, you know, kind of increased and, and tipped off. So the, the, basically the gaming landscape of Linux has improved uh, dramatically, right? Right. That's primarily due to the, you know, the Valve's Steam Deck, which is the handheld gaming device running Linux and the increasing number of games supporting Linux natively or via compatibility, right? The layers like the Proton. So this has encouraged both gamers and developers to adopt and support Linux. Linux has seen more of a basically a privacy respecting and efficient alternative, especially for users concerned about the data collection and bloatware in mainstream uh, operating systems, right? Linux is free and open source. Open source <laughs> is, is what I would underline here, right? Making it appealing for users and organizations, right? Looking to avoid licensing fees and vendor lock-in right? Some governments and organizations are moving large numbers of systems to Linux, further boosting its share. Linux remains popular among, you know, developers and, and tech enthusiasts, right? Which help drive innovation and awareness in the broader consumer market. Now, with Linux becoming more of a, you know, a bigger deal when it comes to the market share, it may not all be a good thing, right? So there is the potential for an increased target for malware and exploits. So as Linux gains more users, it becomes a more attractive target for malicious actors. Currently, Linux benefits from security through obscurity, but higher adoption would likely you know, lead to more viruses, ransomware, you name it, targeted attacks, especially against popular distributions. You know, the license uh, or the Linux ecosystem has, you know, is, is basically it's highly fragmented. So it's, you know, it has hundreds of distributions and multiple desktop environments. So growth in market share could exacerbate these issues, making it even harder for software developers to support Linux, leading to inconsistent user experiences and basically more compatibility headaches for end, you know, end users. The, there is a, uh, a pressure to standardize and maybe lose diversity, right? When it comes to Linux, so to attract mainstream users and commercial software vendors, there may be a pressure to standardize on certain distributions, package formats, or desktop environments. So this could stifle the basically the diversity and you know the innovation that many current Linux users value, right? As more businesses and governments adopt Linux, there is a risk that commercial interests could overshadow the community-driven you know ethos of open source development, right? That's what the day ones wanted. That's what the day ones wanted. So that could potentially lead to decisions that prioritize profit over user freedom or privacy. Many new users may expect Linux to work out of the box like Windows or Mac OS if their expectations are not met due to hardware compatibility issues, lack of certain proprietary applications or unfamiliar user interfaces. It could lead to frustration and negative perceptions of Linux as a whole. So a larger, you know, user base means more bug reports, feature requests and support demands, right? Volunteer driven projects could become overwhelmed leading to burnout or lower quality releases. So that's what I have for you today. Please take a moment right now to hit that subscribe button and the like button. If you want more videos like this, please let me know that by hitting that subscribe button and the like button. I appreciate your viewership. Stay safe and see you in the next video.